this. We want to live here. So that's number one. I say, I know we're in a recession right now. I, own, I only run a small business. I don't think there's any doubt we're in a recession. I hate to be a doomsayer, but I think that's the truth. But at the same time, I look at $870,000, and I wish we had the number tonight of what that would mean to the tax rate. How much for $100,000 would that mean so we could start talking real numbers? I don't know. I don't think it's substantial, but I think it's, it's somewhere in between there. But I look at it and I say, this, this, act, this event we're having here tonight, and while yes, it does appeal mainly to people with kids in the schools, if you don't sit here and hear the passionate answers that these professional educators are giving and say, we're shortchanging our kids, I don't know what else to say, because it's clear. And, and, and I think we go out there and we get whoever forms the committee, we're shortchanging our kids. We're 13th from the bottom. We're not offering full art courses. We're not offering full music. Write a speech. Get Barack Obama's speechwriter and write a speech <laughs> about what isn't acceptable. This, <laughs> oh, that's right. Here we get I can sit there. This is not acceptable. And I can write that 10 times, and I can write something next to each one of those, what isn't acceptable in our education system. And I am a staunch advocate of the override. And I know it'll be difficult to get it passed. But it's not fair what we're doing to our kids. And that's, that's, that's the way I want to get it passed. Pete? Pete Kaplan here. I've got a, a couple of uh, kids in the school system. And um, I've been a resident of North Reading for 15 years. And um, I think that there isn't uh, that Discussions like this tend to get caught up in, in the uh, you know the horror stories of how how the uh, school system has um, you know cut through skin and uh, cut through muscle and now we're we're working on bone and I think um, maybe these meetings ought to start out with something like a pledge of allegiance just to remind people of uh, the fact that uh, there's a real there's a, a real problem with uh, funding in Massachusetts with Prop Two and a Half, and I'm not looking to start a campaign to override it uh, tonight. But I just think it's important for people to be aware of the fact that with that two and a half percent collar that you've got in Prop Two and a Half, basically a lot of all of that, real all of that money, is going to be spoken for every year with wage and salary increases for your staffing. Because remember. The number was mentioned here earlier, 82% of the school system expenditures go for uh, salaries. And you know, on the, the non-school side, it's maybe 60 or 70%. So overall, it's probably like 70, 75% of the town spending goes for salaries. And your 2.5% is wiped out right there. So there is, you know, to some extent, you're, you're trying to roll the, the rock uphill. And I think it's just important to recognize that, that funding is always going to be tight. We can't just sit here and talk about all these important needs and let's just grab the money from somewhere because there is no deep pocket sitting out there, that uh, no cookie jar that we can raid. So I just think it's very important for people to be aware of the, the funding constraints that the town has and recognize that we are going to need overrides if we want to maintain the semblance of any kind of a decent school system. And I'm sure that this is a problem facing every other town in, in the state. Maybe Dr. Trout could talk about what he hears from um, his colleagues <coughs> at the uh, superintendent level. But um, just recognize that there's no easy fix here. And what you will need to do as uh, parents is commit to putting your oomph behind an override because that's the only way that uh, things are going to get better. Uh, you know, maybe the, the state will come through with uh, you know more money at some point, but you know that there again, it's a, it's a year by year struggle. So it's um, it's a tough situation that we're in, but it's important to recognize where you are, and then you can start uh, planning to uh, to get your way out of it. Um, finally, it's the point's been mentioned a couple of times here tonight, and again, it's something that I think people need to be aware of that we are 13th from the bottom in terms of per capita spending in the schools. It's 13 out of 351. Uh, that's not a good statistic. Thanks, man.
I, I, I will have uh, Dr. Trout address what he may be hearing from other superintendents. I do want to point out one other thing in that we had a benchmarking study done of 20 like communities in North Reading, and we were 20th in per pupil spending in that, in that study. Just, just briefly, um, I do meet regularly with superintendents. The Superintendents <coughs> Association is um, uh, really focusing on revamping uh, the whole foundation formula and how Chapter 7 money is, is uh, allocated. Number one, and then a special focus is on special education and trying to put into what's called the circuit breaker, which is the money that comes, some money that comes from the state, uh, to put into that fund the, uh, the transportation piece uh, in, in special education. Um, in terms of speaking with other superintendents in this area, I, I think you hit it right on, you know, hit, hit the nail right on the head. We're 13th and everyone else, or we're 13th from the bottom, but everyone else is starting in a much different place. Um, and so when they're, when they're dealing with economic crunches, they're, they're dealing with uh, reductions from a higher level, from a higher position. We heard about Wilmington able to offer uh, full day kindergarten. Uh, we're able to, we're, we're talking about um, our neighboring community of Reading and we look what they've done in terms of facilities. Uh, we look at uh, Linfield, where uh, the number of advanced placement courses exceeds ours uh, at our high school. Um, all of those communities, uh, even just in this, this, this small little corner of the world, are at a much higher funding level uh, in terms of education. That's why we commissioned or supported the, uh, the municipal benchmarking study, and that results clearly indicated when you compare ourselves not just to neighboring communities, but you look at uh, communities across the Commonwealth that are, that are matched up to us in uh, 15 different attributes, uh, we are substantially uh, below. I'm gonna ask Mrs. Baca then. Yeah. I just had a question for Joe Bernard at the high school, um, and this hasn't come up in the early discussion. Um, John, you said there were 150 juniors and seniors that elected Jim, that could not take Jim, and you had to put them into other electives. We don't have a lot to offer for electives, so these kids were put into art and the theater classes. Um, so we've been discussing over the past year as a school committee and the superintendent, what's the best practice to continue to take kids that would have elected gym, who really aren't kids that would elect art and music necessarily, and we're putting them into that class. It goes to what Steve spoke to earlier, what they're doing to that class and where the teacher can't take the serious art and theater students versus reducing the graduation requirements and basically sending the juniors and seniors home to protect the art music class and keep the sizes low, but at the same time, you water down the diploma from North Reading High School in doing that. Where are you as a high school principal? Well, it's, it, it's a very good question. It's complicated by the fact that we're talking about juniors and seniors. So many of them have already taken elective courses, particularly the seniors, so you're further limited as to what's available to them. And what Mr. Jervy said earlier and what you just said, Mrs. Vacker, is exactly right. Um, students got to have a class. And, you know, might not, ceramics might not be their thing, but that's where I have a spot to put them. I have told Dr. Troden as recently as two weeks ago, that graduation requirements are going to have to seriously be looked at being reduced if additional staff do not come to the high school. It is, it is, it is physically impossible to continue to program students, uh, particularly where we're anticipating the numbers that we are in terms of the growth of the population. It's impossible to, to place them in eight classes uh, for all four years, so it's very likely that I would need to look at reducing uh, graduation requirements for, um, in a phase in way, possibly affecting freshmen or sophomore students. Uh, again, it's a little bit difficult to pinpoint that exactly because we, we start electing classes actually tomorrow. The junior class next year seniors meets with uh, his, their guidance counselors starting tomorrow. Um, so they'll start to program, but if we do not have the staffing to offer electives, substantive electives, electives that students are electing to take. They're picking them out of the book and talking with their parents and meeting with their guidance counselor or their previous year's teacher for a recommendation for a course. You know, should I be taking a fifth science? I'm looking, you know, thinking maybe 
I might go into a medical field. So maybe it's a good idea to have an additional science course beyond the four uh, required courses that we have. To put students in the courses that they want to take, that have meaning for them, is, going, is getting increasingly difficult very quickly. Uh, and I think it's a real possibility that, uh, that students are going to end up in some form of a study hall for one of their 78 minute block classes, uh, particularly incoming freshmen and sophomore students. And I don't offer that as a, a scare tactic. Um, it's a reality, unfortunately. You see the numbers, that, or you, you've heard the numbers. Um, I don't expect them to, to be anything better than what they are uh, now for next year um, without additional staff. Just to add to that quickly, and then before I get to Kara, um, we require eight courses per year, which exceeds the state standards. <coughs> So some people, some people might sit and say, well, you exceed the state standards, why don't you just cut back? But well, we want to exceed the state standards, the state average. The state average isn't what, we, isn't what we strive for in North Reading. We should be striving for much more than that. And I think keep continuing to have our kids take eight classes per year is what we should, is what we should be doing. We should be able to offer, offer those uh, eight classes. Carol? Two of my resident of North Reading, lifelong resident, I graduated from North Reading High School. I received an excellent education here, was able to go to the college of my choice, and bought a home here, decided to raise my family here, and I'm quite concerned with the level of education North Reading is providing, and that's why I'm involved. And I wanted to let people know that we are working diligently at the state level. The schools cooperated, every parent in North Reading who has a child in a North Reading school got a letter home today. Or four, four letters asking them to write. And all they had to do was sign it and send it to um, those at the state legislature, legislature, asking them, imploring them to send more money to towns and cities um, to fund education appropriately. And I think I, I think it's really important to dispel the myth to the community that we are not trying to provide a private school level education in North Reading for our kids. We are, you know, we're talking about art and music and, you know, a, a, an English teacher so that the class doesn't have 30 kids in it, you know, basics. And I think it's important for the people in the community, you know, if, if you don't have kids in the middle school, you have no idea what that kid's day looks like. But if you have a child there, you certainly do when they come home and they have no homework because they've done it all. Or they have uh, no art class for a month at the middle school elementary level. So I think it's important that people in the community understand, and I hope that this isn't the only group of people who are listening tonight. I hope there's a lot of people in town who watch tonight and who will participate on Wednesday night to implore the Board of Selectmen um, to understand the importance and communicate that to the rest of the community, how important it is that we adequately fund public education in North Reading. I want to commend both the local chapter of Sandra Children and North Reading United for Education. Um, North Reading United for Education has a great website. I believe it's nrue.org. And if you want to go there, and you can see a lot of the statistics we've been talking about in terms of what we're spending, how we're spending it. And the people who've organized those two groups have done a great job, and they've, they're really committed to, to education in North Reading. So I, I just wanted to um, uh, tell them we appreciate their effort. Um, I have Pete and then Bob Macero. I just wanted to uh, make a, a quick comment. Uh, in the interest of, of uh, understanding uh, the, the, uh, the whole scope of the, the issues that we're dealing with, um, just as I was saying before, you know, don't just think that schools need money. Let's go get money and, and bring it into the schools. That you have to you have to get it from somewhere. And given the fact that uh, it looks that you know their school funding situation. Appears to be in pretty bad shape right now. I don't want to create the impression that this school system went out and bought uh, school buses with gold-plated uh, engines ten years ago, and that you know they blew the money somehow. Um, and I don't want to use this as a political forum, but uh, just talk, you know, thinking about the the benchmarking study that the town commissioned last year, which compared North Reading to uh, about 20 uh, peer communities, and we were at the bottom of the uh, pack in terms of per pupil spending in the 
schools. 